Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and today in this video we'll be talking about the anatomy of the palatine tonsil. Now before knowing about the palatine tonsil, we need to know about the Waldir's ring. The Waldir's ring, it is a lymphoid tissue which is present in the subepithelial layer of the pharynx which is aggregated to form masses. Now these masses as we can see in this picture are the adenoids and the tubal tonsil which are situated in the nasopharynx. The palatine tonsil uh, which is situated in the oropharynx, there is a lingual tonsil and here there is large lateral pharyngeal bands as well as the nodules on the posterior pharyngeal wall. Now talking about the palatine tonsil, the palatine tonsil it, it is also a part of the Waldius ring. The palatine tonsil it is an ovoid mass of lymphoid tissue. Now it is present in the lateral wall of the oropharynx which is between the anterior and the posterior pillars. These are two in number that is situated on the either side of the lateral wall of the oropharynx. Now um, talking about its anatomy, it has a medial surface and a lateral surface and an upper and a lower pole. Now let's talk about the surface. It has a medial surface and a lateral surface. Now let's talk about the medial surface. The medial surface it is lined by non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. This epithelium they dip into the substance of the tonsil to form crypts. The crypts are usually 15 to 20 in numbers and there is also a large script which is known as crypta magna or intratonsillar cleft. This crypta magna it represents the ventral part of the second pharyngeal pouch. The main crypt they give rise to secondary crypts and the crypts they may be filled with cheesy material which consists of the an epithelial cells, bacteria and food debris which can be expressed by the pressure over the anterior pillar and these are usually seen in the, uh, in the chronic tonsillitis. Now talking about the lateral surface, the lateral surface of the tonsil it is formed up of a well-defined fibrous capsule and there is also loose areolar tissue which consists of paratonsillar vein and this loose areolar tissue it is present between the bed of the tonsil and the capsule. This loose areolar tissue it is um, uh, it is very important as uh, it helps for the easy dissection during tonsillectomy and it is also a site for the collection of the pus during quincy or the peritonsillar abscess. Now talking about the pole of the tonsil, the tonsil it has an upper pole and the lower pole. Now let's talk about the upper pole. The upper pole it extends into the soft palate and there is also a semilunar fold which covers the medial surface and it uh, the semilunar fold it extends between the anterior and the posterior pillar. There is also a space, uh, potential space which is known as supratonsillar fossa which is enclosed by the semilunar fold. Now talking about the lower pole of the tonsil, it is attached to the tongue and it has a triangular fold of mucous membrane which extends from the anterior pillar to the anterior inferior part of the tonsil and it closes a space which is known as anterior tonsillar space. There is also tonsillar lingual sulcus which separates the tongue from the tonsil and it may be a seat of carcinoma. In this uh, anatomy, we need to focus about on the semilunar fold and the triangular fold and the supratonsillar fossa and the anterior tonsillar space. Now let's talk about the bed of the tonsil. The bed of the tonsil, it, for, it is formed up of various structures as shown in the figure and um, there is also labeling of uh, the numbers shown in the picture. Here uh, talking generally, this is uh, the uvula, this is the anterior pillar, posterior pillar and in between this is the uh, palatine tonsil and this is the uh, tongue. Now talking about the bed of the tonsil, it is formed of structures which are lying behind the uh, lateral surface of the tonsil and these are the first one is the fibrous capsule. This, one, this piece is known as uh, the loose areolar tissue which consists of the paratonsillar vein. This one is the pharyngobasilar fascia, superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx, buccopharyngeal fascia. It also consists of glossopharyngeal nerve and this one is the facial artery. This is styloglossus muscle, submandibular gland, and this is the angle of the mandible with medial pterygoid muscle. These structures are the bed of the tonsil. The glossopharyngeal muscle and the styloid process, if enlarged, they may lie in the lower part of the tonsillar fossa, and both these structures can be surgically approached uh, after tonsillectomy through the tonsil bed. The bed of the tonsil it is formed by superior constrictor and the styloglossus muscle. Now talking about the arterial supply, the um, facial artery, it is a tonsillar branch, is the main artery and the ascending palatine branch is also pre present. Now let's focus on this picture. This picture, it is the um, arterial supply of the tonsil. We know that the tonsil is supplied by the branches of the external carotid artery and these branches are the lingual artery, facial artery, ascending pharyngeal artery and this maxillary artery. The lingual artery, it gives uh, branches like dorsal lingual branches. The facial artery, it gives two 
two branches that is ascending palate and branch and the tonsillar artery the tonsillar artery uh, being the main arterial supply of the tonsil the ascending pharyngeal artery gives tonsillar branch as well as the maxillary artery it gives descending palate and artery branch to the tonsil now let's talk about the venous drainage the venous drainage is by paratonsillar vein which through the common facial vein it drains into the pharyngeal venous plexus Talking about the lymphatic drainage, it is drained by the upper deep cervical nodes by piercing the superior constrictor, particularly the jugodiagastric node, which is situated below the angle of the mandible. The nerve supply of the tonsil is through the lesser palatine branch of the spinopalatine ganglion and the glossopharyngeal nerve. These provide the sensory nerve supply. The function of the tonsil. The tonsil it acts as a sentinel to guard against the foreign intruders like the virus and the bacteria and other antigens coming into contact with the inhalation and ingestion. It also provides local immunity and provides a surveillance mechanism so that the entire body is prepared for defense. Both humoral and the cellular immunity is involved. Now let's talk about the difference between the tonsil and the lymph node. The tonsil it is a sub-epithelial tissue while the lymph node it is a connective tissue. The tonsil it, it is partly encapsulated while the lymph node is fully encapsulated. The tonsil it uh, has crypts while the crypts are absent in the lymph nodes. In the tonsil there is no cortex and medulla while the cortex and medulla are present in the lymph node. In the tonsil there is only efferent supply while in the lymph node there is efferent as well as efferent sub supply. And in the tonsil there is growth curve while in the lymph node there is no growth curve. Now let's talk about the difference between the tonsil and the adenoid. The tonsils are also composed, these both are the component of the Waldir's ring, but the main difference are the tonsil is situated in the oropharynx while the adenoid is situated in the nasopharynx. The tonsil it is lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, while the adenoid is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium, as is lined in the nasopharynx. The tonsil it is partly encapsulated while the adenoid is uh, not encapsulated. The tonsil has crypts, the adenoid has furrows. The growth peak for tonsil is 8 years, for the adenoid is 6 years. The growth stops at 15 years for the tonsil while in the 12 years for the adenoids. And partial regression of the tonsil occurs at 18 years while in the, for the adenoids that disappears by 20 years of age. Now this was about the anatomy of the tonsil. Stay tuned for more videos and if you like this video please share, subscribe and comment. Thank you.